According to a Tampa Bay newspaper, a Florida monastery had its bank account frozen because an 80-year-old nun did not have a social security number and photo ID on file with the bank. Equally bizarre, a Providence newspaper reported that a retired school teacher in Rhode Island had trouble paying off his credit card bill because his transaction was uncharacteristic and therefore raised a red flag. Or what about the couple that was forced to shut their bank account because of their missionary work in Latin America? These are not examples of heartless clerks or incompetent bank tellers. Instead, they are symbols of the government's ill-designed fight against money laundering. Banks and a wide range of other financial institutions, as well as merchants like jewelers, are obliged to snoop on their customers in hopes of detecting whether money was obtained illicitly. This Center for Freedom and Prosperity video is going to examine money laundering laws and ask whether they make sense. I'm Dan Mitchell of the Cato Institute. Thanks for being with us. The original purpose of anti-money laundering laws was to reduce the incentive for illegal behavior by making it more difficult for crooks to enjoy their ill-gotten gains. From an economic perspective, this made sense, at least in theory. Policies that increase the cost or reduce the benefit of criminal activity are likely to reduce bad behavior. And the good news is that anti-money laundering laws do impose high costs. The bad news, though, is that the cost is borne by the financial industry and its consumers. According to the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, institutions filed more than 18 million reports on their customers in 2008, including 16 million currency transaction reports and more than 1.3 million suspicious activity reports. All this paperwork carries the hefty price tag for taxpayers and industry, $7 billion, according to experts from the Institute for International Economics, and more than $10 billion, according to other experts. It's worth noting, though, that this does not include the cost of diminished privacy for you and me, much less the cost of disrupted lives for Florida nuns or retired school teachers. Let's ask a fundamental question. Do we really want to live in a society where banks because of know-your-customer laws, have to treat all of us like potential criminals, even though the Constitution supposedly guarantees a presumption of innocence? Do we actually think it's a good idea, as one columnist recently explained, to maintain laws that don't catch criminals, but force poor people to pay higher costs, or perhaps drives them out of the banking system altogether? But let's pretend that privacy has no value and that poor people do not matter. And let's look just narrowly at the estimate of the multi-billion dollar regulatory burden and ask whether we're getting value for the money. Is there a sufficiently large reduction in crime, in other words, or terrorism to justify this high cost? Sadly, there seems to be little reason to believe that resources are being intelligently allocated. Criminologists have failed to find any proof that anti-money laundering laws have lowered crime rates which, of course, was the reason the laws were first adopted in the 1980s and 1990s. No wonder a former Reagan administration official said that he now considers all these measures to be highly counterproductive. People from the private sector also agree that the laws have generated lots of expense but have yielded virtually no benefits. And public policy experts have reached the same conclusion, noting that the laws impose tremendous costs with few tangible benefits. Heck, the, the laws don't even put much of a dent in money laundering. A Brookings Institution scholar testified before Congress that 99.9% of dirty money in America is successfully laundered. And the U.S. Sentencing Commission reports that only about 900 people get sentenced each year for money laundering. That's a pathetically low rate of return for a law that cost us seven to $10 billion and requires 18 million reports on the financial transactions of the American people. Lawmakers should give serious thought to radically changing the current anti-money laundering system and figuring out smarter ways to fight crime. Surely there are better ways to fight crime, after all, than having financial institutions file currency transaction reports every time $10,000 changes hands. It makes a lot more sense for the government to actively monitor a few bad guys than it does to require banks to spy on all of their customers. Let's conclude. 
the current anti-money laundering regime creates a giant haystack of financial information, so it should come as no surprise that law enforcement has trouble finding needles of criminal activity. Anti-money laundering laws did not catch the 9-11 terrorists like Mohammed Attu. Anti-money laundering laws did not catch Bernie Madoff. But these laws and regulations do create hardship for some law-abiding people, and they diminish privacy for all of us. If we want to get the most bang out of our buck, the time has come for a dramatic reassessment of money laundering laws so that resources instead can be allocated where they will help fulfill the government's legitimate function of protecting life, liberty, and property. I'm Dan Mitchell. Send this Center for Freedom and Prosperity video to all your friends and colleagues. Thanks for watching.